Good morning and welcome to Daily Devotions with Pastor Joe. I'm Pastor Joe, and for this beautiful uh, Friday morning, November 16th, 2018, we're going to be looking back at the book of Judges again, and uh, this time chapter 10, the first five verses, verses 1 through 5, uh, it talks about two judges, Tola and Jair, as you can see there, and they are fairly minor judges who have very little said about them. We're going to talk about that in a moment. We're going to read this passage and then look maybe to Chronicles if we get a moment that uh, speaks a little bit more about them. So Judges 10.1 says, And after Abimelech there arose to defend Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, the man of Issachar. And he dwelt in Shamir in Mount Ephraim, and he judged Israel twenty and three years and died and was buried in Shamir. And after he arose, him arose Jair the Agileadite, and judged Israel twenty and two years. And he had thirty sons and ro that rode on thirty ass colts, and they that had thirty cities, which are called Havoth Jair unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Canaan. And so, what I want us to look at here a couple of things. First, let me bring up what. Tola, the first of these two, uh, First Chronicles 7 has a little bit about, to talk about him, but not much. He was one of the descendants, one of the sons of Issachar, Tola, and that's really all it talks about. And then it has his sons, Uzi, Raphia, Jeriel, all these ones down here. Uh, they were valiant men of might in their generations, whose number was in the days of David two and twenty thousand and six hundred. So, all of his uh, children down the line, grandchildren, great 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 grandchildren, all the way down in David's time, uh, numbered a total of twenty two thousand six hundred men, uh, obviously, and they were very strong men. So, they obviously were used of God in a mighty way. Uh, for the armies, most likely, of Israel. Now, Jair, on the other hand, let's see, there's several Jairs in the Bible. Um, 1 Chronicles 2, 22 and 23, for sure, seems to be who is being spoken of here. And it won't drop any lower. Well, there it goes. 22 says, Segub begat Jair, who had three and twenty cities in the land of Gilead and uh, towns of Jair. So that may be speaking of the same. Uh, Makir, sons of Makir, the father of Gilead. Uh, and then the other place where somebody named Jair is mentioned that may have something to do with this, which I don't think it does, chapter 20, verse 5, where it says that uh, one of uh, one of Goliath's brothers was slown, slewn by an, a son of Jair, Elhanan. And so, with those in mind, let's get back to where we were here in Judges. Judges 10. So, Tola and Jair were a couple of interesting characters in the Bible, but not interesting enough to have their names mean much of anything. I mean, obviously, Tola left enough of a uh, impression upon Israel that they kept track of him and kept track of his name and kept track of who his family was, or at least his family was proud enough to. But aside from dwelling in Ephraim and being a child of, in this family and judging Israel for 23 years and dying and being buried, uh, he has no lineage. Nothing is really said of him. So nobody cared enough to say that he defended against a great army or that he uh, brought people back to the Lord or that he served God or that he did anything, honestly, aside from being a judge of Israel, defending Israel. And we don't know against who. We don't know that it was that big of a deal. He might have just been a mighty man. And so the neighboring nations, when they saw him alive, said, yeah, we're not going to mess with Israel. Uh, but we don't really know. He didn't do enough to leave an impression. He didn't leave enough for his name to mean anything. And so his work for the Lord was probably nothing uh, as far as that goes. But he was just enough to name. And then, and I'm not going to get into any of the um, stories of what may be. 
<laughs> all right, I'm just going by what the Bible says. But then for, after him comes Jair. He was a Gileadite, so he was a descendant of Gilead, and judged Israel 22 years. Great, so he was there one year less than Tola, and he had 30 sons who rode on the colts of the donkeys, and they had 30 cities. Every one of them had a city, and those cities are all called by one name unto this day in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried, and we don't really know much more. I, I Seriously, we don't know much more about him. I mean, you can see that he had some pride. He had some proud things to be uh, put as accomplishments in that he had 30 sons, and that's it, you know? Um, so I, just a couple of things, a couple of thoughts that come to my mind looking into these characters is that they, almost to a T, followed what uh, Solomon says much later, or, yeah, Solomon says much later in the Bible when he tells us that uh, one day your name is going to be forgotten in time. These characters just about all are, are all but forgotten. We don't know anything really about them unless stories that have been told that we can't verify. Uh, and so the Bible has what little there is that they were judges over Israel and left no impression, did nothing of any significance, um, meant nothing in the long scheme of things, just that God honored them enough to put them in the Bible because they did at least rise up to the occasion to protect Israel when it was their time. And so just a little bit of a warning maybe that we can easily garner from this is that whenever God raises us up for uh, a work to be done, we ought to be doing it in, in, in such a way that it, not that it leaves an impression for our sakes, because that's not what it's for, but where people can say, yeah, he was doing the work of the Lord, or she was doing the work of the Lord, and God really did help during that time. Because we don't even see any in, instance of the children of Israel going away from evil, for certain, at least. I mean, they may have, uh, on a couple of other judges, I know they continued to do their worship of the gods, and, and who knows? I mean, some of this may even have had something to do with that, uh, where it says later, the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, serving Balaam and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria. You know, they could have during that time still been pretty prevalent, uh, prevalently serving those worldly gods of, uh, of the different nations around them rather than serving the God who created them and who took them out of Egypt. And so, just to me, I, I guess I'm seeing this uh, first as seeing that, you know, if, if you rise up to the occasion and do the work that God has called you for, uh, you are going to get the reward of the honor that, that you deserve for following God. Obviously, they got the honor of having their names mentioned, at least in the Bible and the book of Judges. But also that if you don't do more than just step up and be there, uh, which is all they seemed to have done as far as we know, then that honor isn't going to take you too far. And there's going to come a moment where you have to come to the realization that uh, you're going to lose out. You're going to lose out spiritually if you don't uh, do something more for the Lord than just be there. Uh, and I don't know where these are today. I hope that I can meet them in heaven and, and <laughs> talk to them about what uh, happened during their lives, but I, I, I just can't say for sure that that's, that's true. They might not have made it. I, I don't know. Um, and it's sort of sad to see a life of somebody who was called to do God's work to rise up and, and be the judge and the protector, the defender of Israel, with just nothing to show for it. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, they had... 23 and 22, so 45 years of, I guess, uh, protection. I wouldn't necessarily say peace. I don't think Israel really had many years of peace at all during the time of the judges, but they, they had nothing else to show for it. And so be careful, especially if you're doing any work for God, that you do it, well, first with the right heart, not looking for honor or anything of that sort. But secondly, do it with all of your heart and do it thoroughly. Uh, you see that over and over again with these judges, that the moment they died, the people went back into worshiping these other gods. And I just, I can't help but think it's because not one of these judges did enough to make Israel say, you know, throw away all of this idol worship. Instead, they just 
continue to keep their idols. Whenever a judge would rise up, they just stick their idols in a closet and wait for the judge to die. Or maybe not even that. Maybe they'd still have them out and still be at least somewhat worshiping these gods. And so be careful. Uh, that's that's about it. Two judges, Tola and Jair. And let's see, the next one is Jephthah, it says on my list. So next week we'll get back and looking at him. Um, but just, uh, you know, as you go through your day-to-day, -day, check your life. See if you're uh, following up to God's standards of what he wants you to do and how he wants you to live. Check and make sure that everything you're doing is for God and for God's glory. And, you know, whether, you know, they might have done great things for God and God just didn't want to uh, put a, a smug mark on their record. Who knows? And if that's the case, all the better. Live that way. Live in a way that, that you know, God gets the glory and not you for whatever happens. Uh, live your life for him, and it will be a life well lived. Anyway, it's been great talking about Tola and Jair and all of the other books and chapters and characters in the Bible that we have so far. If you like this video, give it a like. Uh, thumbs up down below. If not, you can hit the, un the dislike button. That's, that's up to you. But uh, try to leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have anything that you'd like to mention or say or if you have anything else to add to this story or your own thoughts about what you get out of it. Um, other than that, like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend, and I'll see you again tomorrow on another daily devotion with Pastor Joe. God bless, and have a great day in the Lord.